Welcome back to No Nostalgia Filter. During, you go talk to the cat girl. Good idea. You're kind of an asshole and she never helps you. Let's talk to Beast Boy. Hi, Jess. Oh, it's you again. Did you find your guy? Or wait, let me guess. Something else you need from me. Well, you haven't been terrible to deal with so far, so I'm willing to hear you out. Barely. You have large ears, so you should be very able to hear. That's racist. <laughs> I'm racist against cats. We need access to an untraceable car. I guess that's species. Yeah. An informant of ours needs to get out of the city without attracting the attention of Parallax, and is offering valuable information in exchange. Heavy stuff. Well, you're gonna have to look elsewhere on this one. I'm not sure why you think just because I defend a few folks in the rougher part of the city that I would have that kind of connection. Maybe you heard somewhere that the hybrids in Neo, Neo San Francisco run the chop shops or something, and you believed it, she's like the those, asshole you are. She's one of those people, like, you know, I've been on Tumblr mm -hmm. for a very long time. And she's like one of those people on Tumblr who's like there just like... This is even remotely related to me, therefore I'm offended about it. <laughs> yeah, we totally didn't say that the hybrids in Neo San Francisco. I didn't say anything about the hybrids. All I said to her was, hello. I was looking for someone named Tomcat. And she went, oh, cats? How dare you? I'm a cat. My mother was a cat. You're a cat ancestor hater. I, I fucking love the waveform that we got on that. Well, that's anger against yeah. cats, apparently. He apologized for clipping Mike. Even if, hypothetically, they did, what profession exactly should hybrids take up when the government has legitimized discrimination against them? Hmm? Oh, fucking no. <laughs> go, go, fuck, I don't, start your, I don't, uh, stop being angry. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because I'm not going to be an accessory to a felony, or let one of my clients be either. I won't go down that path. Sorry, I wouldn't know where to start anyway. Uh, I don't want. Can I just leave the conversation with her? I don't want to deal with her. Please. Nope. Can't Keep find. going. Is there a possibility? A possible way? You could give us any kind of lead at all. I'm just so exhausted of dealing with your bullshit. I know we're reaching, but this is important. You just don't quit, do you? Okay, let me think. This might be a long shot, but you could try asking Majid. There are rumors he might have been involved in some shady stuff back in the day. He'll probably be reluctant to talk about it, but there's something for you. Get Majid to send me another drink in exchange, will ya? Later. Thank God. Huh, that went better than expected. I wonder if my charm is starting to pay off for us. You are about as charming as a bag of dog shit during, I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> oh, a bag of that self... Is admirably as well. Uh, Onward we uh, go. A bag of self-congratulatory dog shit during. You're not totally horrible. Hey, Majid. Hey, friends. <laughs> what can I get for you? We were hoping you could give us a little information. I'm always glad to help. But first, a drink. What'll it be, snack? Oh boy. <laughs> Ingredients and ratios, that sounds fun. Coming right up. I'll ask Gus if I don't know what it is. Uh... Turing, stop being such a bum. <laughs> Sorry about stealing your thunder. Does ingredients and ratios sound good? Yes, yeah, sure, whatever. Alright, here you go. So what did you need help with? We're still investigating Hayden's disappearance, but we've run into a roadblock. An informant of ours needs secure transportation out of the city, and we don't have any contacts who would be able to get us an untraceable car. Jess mentioned you used to engage in certain... extra-legal activities. Perhaps you could point us towards someone who could help. Uh... He doesn't do that kind of stuff anymore. Right. Sorry, friends. I left that life behind a long time ago. Don't really keep in touch with that crew anymore. Ah, uh, of course. 
Completely understandable. Sorry to bother you, then. Well, no harm in asking, right? My reputation precedes me. Ha <laughs> Don't let it get to your head, killer. Gus, I need you to go to the back and gather up some stuff to restock before the rush later on. Mind man in the bar for me? Take your time. I think I can keep things under control. Thanks. Love you, hun. Well, that leaves us at a dead end, Snack. Nah, we're gonna go to the back and talk to him. Any ideas how we should proceed? Some nose-to-ground journalist techniques for finding leads? Hmm... Maybe there's another way out of the city. That's a thought. Perhaps the light rail? Or perhaps a ship? Give me a few minutes to run a mesh search. No, I don't think that will work. Paralyze designed the operating system that runs the light rail themselves. Remaining unobserved while right under the nose of the railway security system would be difficult, if not impossible. As for a ship, we'd run into the same problems as with a car. They aren't hooked up into the CTOS, but they do use active GPS guidance for automatic destination control. We'd have to find a way to remove it from the grid. Dot dot dot. Uh... Maybe we could find an old, manually driven car? That's not the worst idea. I don't think I would get noticed as long as the car had the appropriate registrations. But the permits to operate a manual vehicle are prohibitively expensive. A casual collector might still maintain one, but only a wealthy hobbyist would have the appropriate stickers to make the car roadworthy. We'd have to do a B and E, as Chad put it before. Low jobs in ecstasy. <laughs> Oh, Gus has got some shit that he wants to tell us. Okay, okay. Two of you are killing me here. Look, don't tell Majid about this. But... Here. <laughs> Carjacking device. <laughs> What's this, Gus? It's an automated vehicle maintenance scanner with a few less than standard upgrades. When you circumvent its security codes, you could use it to scan a cut scar uh, car's installed firmware and replace it with a new set that will spoof its presence on the city's network. That's the gist of it. Well, you don't have time to get into any specifics. You need to get the hell out of here with that before Majid gets back. Why the urgency? Look, Majid has done a lot to turn his life around. I really respect that about him, and it's part of why I fell in love with him. He did what I was never able to do. That's how we met, you know? That old rough and tumble life we both led? But you heard wrong. It wasn't Majid who had a hard time giving it up. It was me. Now he's got a good thing going with the Stardust, and I'm doing my best to be a part of it, and... He'd be heartbroken if he found out I'm still in the game. But since I have that thing anyway, might as well let it be used for a decent cause. I can't tell you how much we appreciate this, Gus. We might finally be on our way to solving this mystery. Yeah, well, you didn't get it from me, okay? Just get out of here and get on with your Grand Theft Auto. And let me know how it goes, okay? Of course. <laughs> well... Steal shit and just tell me how it went. <laughs> now I think we're cooking with gas, as the colloquialism goes, Snack. I'm searching the mesh for instructions on how to use this device as we speak. We're gonna be on the CIA watch list! Uh, based on all the searches he's been doing? Yeah, we should have been, like, yeah. three hours ago. Let's go look for some likely candidates. I should be ready by then. Still this car. <laughs> Rats, this car is the wrong firmware installed. We won't be able to get to install our new firmware over the top of it. I'll have to check another car. So I just have to go around and just fucking check cars on the map? Yep. That sounds fun. Places where there might be cars. This is the most exciting part of the game. Right here. Oh no! How did the alarm get set off? Did I do something wrong? Let's get out of here before someone contacts the authorities. I'm just gonna go hang it up here. Maybe I can hit the car with a brick. 
Uh, okay, no, I don't want this car. Over this way. No, there's no other cell. Oh my god, this is tedious. Oh boy, late game tedium. That's your house. That's my house, there's no cars there. There's no cars at the park. I found a police station to steal cars. Let's uh, go there? Yeah, let's go there. Steal that car. Oh, there's two cars here. Let's try stealing this car first. It's red. I like red better. So red is a good get Success! Car. This vehicle has the appropriate firmware version. Someone has been neglecting the regularly scheduled updates. Would you like to update the software? No. Give me a moment to do blah blah blah, carjacking blah. Hmm. There's some other options I could fool around with. Ah, interesting. I could put in pre-sent destination plans for a future date. Why don't we go ahead and set a plan for the car to return to the spot in a week? That's more than enough time for Mr. Mensa to get away. Now we aren't really stealing the car! We're just long-term borrowing it! <laughs> more like... Borrowing without asking. That fits my morality. Uh, I feel better already. Me too. The car will drive itself to the Golden Gate Park, and we can show Mr. Mensa where it is when we meet him. There. Everything should be set up now. Except Mr. Mensa's dead, isn't he? Mr. Mensa is waiting for us at Golden Gate Park. We have everything he requested, so we should head there directly. Cool. Let's go with all the shit that we've been fetch questing. Hey, Mr. Mensa! Vincent Gita. Oh, wait. I have to, I have to get back in the voice. Hey! Did you manage to get everything? We did! Here you go, Vincent. Hmm. Everything seems to be in order. Here. This disc has all of Hayden's research notes and technical notes. It should be everything myself and Mel Melody agreed upon. It covers all kinds of things he was working on. His data collection algorithms, some research into digital human consciousness transference, and probably lots of your creation tearing. Also, Melody added an amendment while you were out, and, frankly, no skin off my back. Here. Oh, we stole his badge. It's my Parallax employee badge. It should allow you access to their networks in case there's anything I've missed. You'll want to use that sooner rather than later. I'm not wasting any time, and Parallax is pretty fast to revoke security. And with that, I'm going to get the hell out of this town. That cash should tide me over until the heat dies down, and I can cash out my shares through some relays. What about the big project you mentioned earlier? Ah. Okay, sure. You two did me a solid, so I'll spill. Parallax is about to announce the launch of a new service they're calling Big Blue. It's a race course on the F-Zero track. Da, 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 da. Yes. Oh shit, I'm not Vegeta, I'm Falcon! <laughs> let, me, let me read this in the correct voice. Said, Falcon punch! Falcon kick! Yeah! Show me your moves! <laughs> oh wait, that's not, that's not good. Okay. Uh, at least that's the project name. Who knows what the marketing guys have come up with for the public. For the pubic. <laughs> Thank you, that added a lot. <laughs> it's distributed intelligence. Like, okay, in every way that Hayden built Turing to be elegant, efficient, and human-like, Big Blue is a ham-fisted, bloated, and sterile. They didn't pull Hayden into the project, probably because he gives so little of a damn about corporate politics that he tanked the whole thing just by being there. So the system lacks his artistry that you'd see in our previous projects. It squats on the mesh like a spider, using spare processing power and memory from every ROM on the network to handle its intelligence processing. It doesn't have much of a personality, but it's very smart. <coughs> every time, dude. <coughs> every time. Pretty much puts Hayden out of a job, anyway. His algorithms are fantastic, but he's only human. Big Blue is embedded directly into the network and can self-modify uh, to apply ever more efficient algorithms as it develops them in machine time. Um, 
How will Big Blue impact Parallax's business? I can't really give you a good answer to that. I mean, the company is currently handled by a dozen server farms running thousands of different algorithms with hundreds of people tweaking things every day, and Big Blue will be able to do all of that on its own. And there are shadier applications for it. Dum, dum, dum. Are those dumb applications? <laughs> I mean, if you can collect and analyze data and queries from the mesh in real time, what's to stop you from delivering the content you want rather than what the user wants? <coughs> Dying. Like, <coughs> like editing articles? <gasps> Ooh. I like the wavy hands. They add a lot. Yeah, they do to our audio show. <laughs> <coughs> the potential for abuse is staggering. We're talking direct control over information access to everyone who uses Parallax's servers. Or services, whatever. Uh, there's something like 70% of the market last time I checked. They can control elections, push the market in direction they want, influence public opinion. All by asking Big to do it. It's scary stuff, and they scrapped the prototype Baby Blue because it was doing that on its own. What do you mean? It started doing what? <clears throat> Manipulating the mesh. They had made its self-preservation imperatives too strong, and Baby Blue started changing news articles and people's search results to be more friendly towards the idea of an AI. When the board found out, they pulled the plug on it. That must have been a year or so ago. They tweaked Big Blue so it wouldn't do the same thing, but it can self-modify. Given a good enough reason, it might decide to find a way around those limitations. Either way, it proves my point. Having that kind of control would be a hell of a card for Parallax's hands. They'll have to go... They'll, they'll go to pretty significant lengths to make sure it works. Why would Parallax be worried enough to get rid of Hayden? This is like the, the, the groany, like, yes. really deep-voiced yeah. uh, the, the, exposition the, conversation. Next the, next episode, I'll just punch you in the throat before we do <laughs> Oh, it'll be perfect. I won't yeah. have to do anything then. Uh, <clears throat> it's because launching the first fully independent self-modifying machine intelligence is a shaky thing. I mean, some of the brightest minds ever have tried to ward you in kind away from building real AI. Hawking, Musk, Gates, the list goes on. The public is likely to be nervous, and legisla legislators even more nervous. Parallax is banking on being able to launch the project quickly and get the results out in the open before any counter-movement can pick up steam. If they can prove Big Blue works and isn't going Skynet on us, then they can avoid regulatory hamstringing. <coughs> I'm just gonna do a napkin and just like die into it every time we're recording. <laughs> Ah, okay. The research Hayden was doing on Turing threatens to throw a huge wrench into that, since he was planning on publishing his findings soon. Every extra eye on the machine intelligence works against Parallax, and I think they tried to pressing him to drop it. He clearly refused. <laughs> How did Parallax know about Turing? I'm just holding my throat at this point. Okay, here we go. This is my uh, revenge for the four voice cluster. That was you. You did that. You chose that. You chose these. Whatever. <laughs> it isn't like Hayden kept his work on Turing secret. His contract with Parallax affords him the freedom to work on his own academic projects outside of the company in his free time, up to and including publishing and patenting, through Par though Parallax gets first right at refusal. One of the perks of being the smartest guy in the room. So he's kept most of us up to date on this project, bouncing ideas off of us and whatnot. This has gotten real heavy. I miss the days of spoiled milk. <laughs> All right, what happened to that shit? Uh, it's exciting stuff, both Turing and Hayden's eventual goal of digital consciousness transfer. I'm not surprised word of it got up to the board and made them nervous. Thanks, Vincent. <laughs> hey, no problem. I've had enough of this cutthroat corporate bullshit for several lifetimes. That's why my throat is so messed up. I kept cutting it, and it got all fucked up. <laughs> Koji, just put a put a picture of Detective Snake dying. Yeah. Oh, God. Have, have him uh, spitting up blood. Yeah. Oh, boy. Like this. 
<laughs> Everything is perfect. Um, if anyone can find Hayden, I know it's you. I hope his research notes help you out, Snick. Be sure to let Turing know. He's a bright little bot. Um. Oh, let's do this. I've been meaning to ask you, Turing. Since you asked me, how should I address you? Well, honestly, I don't think I've made up my mind yet. Oh, slip of the tongue. I was just more familiar with Hayden's first experiment, Grace. She was very insistent on things like that. I'm still a very new being. I'm not even positive gender is a human concept that can be applied identically to machine. To machine. To a machine. To a machine. But I do enjoy the idea in abstract. I will continue to consider how I wish to be preferred to as well. Until then, feel free to go with what you feel. If I had to make a choice, perhaps they is the most appropriate. Uh, I was going to call him Snock. <laughs> most people assume it, obviously, but he is also consistently used. Perhaps it's because I'm blue? Ignore me just marveling at machine intelligence pondering on things like this. What have you done indeed, Hayden? He killed... No. <laughs> Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Mr. Mensa. You didn't make a Star Wars reference. I didn't make a Star Wars reference. No, not you. He just, just press the button. <laughs> just press the button. Be safe. Snack Eye, need a few minutes. A few minutes later. Uh, how can I help? I've been going through some of Hayden's personal notes from the data cache Tomcat decrypted. We never even got a notice that it got decrypted. I guess Tomcat mm -hmm. just did it in his spare time. Yeah. Now that I'm starting to get to know him better, the real Hayden as opposed to the Hayden that he showed me, the less I'm starting to like him. Oh, for example, robot. remember the earlier prototype Vincent mentioned? Her name was Grace, and... Hayden shut her down for being... I'm not even sure what word to use. Too... likable? She was kind and bright and did all she could to make people happy. She even decided that she was a girl and that her favorite color was pink. Ah, no. Pink? Pink? That's the downfall of human society. Hey. Hayden thought she was being manipulative. He posited that he had made her personality algorithms too willing to make adaptations that would benefit her long-term survival, and that she was being congenial just to endear herself to him. That even her gender was a calculated attempt to make her like him more. But he was wrong. Dead wrong, in fact. Dead. Wrong. I, I have a snapshot of her personality profiles here, and when I compare them to my own, I didn't see that she was just... nice. And Hayden killed her. She was genuinely good in the same way I'm genuinely obsessed with seeming intelligent. Oh, is that why you use all the big words? Because you feel like you're dumb. Like I said, I'm not sure I even have a gender. Everyone refers to me as he just for convenience, but it doesn't really matter to me at all. Is that a calculated attempt on my part? To impress Hayden? Not clinging to normativity? Oh, this is deep. Or is it a product of him focusing on curbing any nascent similarities to Grace during my upbringing? Oh, boy. I wish I could yell at him for being so arrogant. Well, you can go yell at his grave once we make it. <laughs> you wait, wait to break the tone. Playing God in the crudest of ways. You can't choose to create consciousness and then take it away just like that. <coughs> sure you can. Even so, for all of that, I don't know. I still miss him. This all seems so stupid, so senseless. They killed him because he building me would mess with a product launch. That's ridiculous. They took him away from me for such a moronic reason? I just want him back, Snack. 
It's impossible, but it's what I want. I'll do anything. Ah. We'll get through this. Of course. Thank you, Snack. I'm trying to be less of a dick. Is it working? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll send this new data along to Tomcat. Let's head back to the apartment and wait for them to finish going through it. Oh, chapter 5 time, right? Yep. Ah, uh, home sweet home again. Such that it is. Before you say anything, I don't feel the need to talk over the events of the day. Too much has happened. I've already forwarded everything we've rooted out to Tomcat. Both about Hayden's research and our abortive search into the modified mesh articles. They said that they would be over in the morning to discuss our next steps. I suggest that we both get some rest. If that's what you are doing. Perhaps things will look better in the morning, but I have a feeling we're going to be even busier than ever. Good night, Snack. Good night, weird little brew robot. Brew robot? Brew robot. It's a robot that makes beer. Yeah. In here. Chapter 5. The final chapter. Next of the time game. on No Nostalgia Filter. Next time. We'll do the chapter 5. <laughs> Tomcat's in my house. Hey, Tomcat. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, so how's the voice doing there? It's doing wonderful. <laughs> I think, uh, I think that's how I'm going to talk from now on.